This is Larry Hayward, pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you for joining us for these devotionals today. Uh, we're continuing these in these devotionals to look at the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes was a sage and philosopher in Israel, living several hundred years before the birth of Christ. He had the affluence, the leisure, in the years he had lived to reflect on the ways of the world and on his own life. He reflected critically, honestly, sometimes through the eyes of faith and sometimes through the eyes of hard-nosed realism or even cynicism. In the first two devotionals from this chapter, we've seen that he wrote about making vows to God and about the place of dreams and ambitions in his life. In verses 8 through 20 of chapter 5, the final three-fourths of the chapter, he ponders a subject that we all wrestle with, money and riches and our responsibility for the poor. So for a few weeks, I want us to look at what particular wisdom he brings to this all too human topic. The verses that I want to talk about briefly today are verses eight and nine in chapter five. They read as follows. If you see in a province the oppression of the poor and the violation of justice and right, do not be amazed at the matter. For the high official is watched by a higher, and there are yet higher ones over them. But all things considered, this is an advantage for a land, a king for a plowed field. Now, when I first read this passage or paid attention to it a year or so ago, I thought what it was saying was this. If you see, you know, where you live in your society, that the poor are being mistreated by those who are responsible for taking care of them, then don't be too concerned. For an official is watching over those persons responsible for taking care of them and a higher official over them. So I thought that that was a reference to God, that in the end, those who mistreated the poor or didn't exercise their responsibility for them would have to face God's judgment. Then I thought the last verse said, even despite of this, all things considered, it's an advantage for a land to have a government, to have a king, to make sure that all the fields are plowed and that there's maximum food for everyone. That's the way I read this passage. But then today I got out the two Bibles that I use to teach from and just read the footnotes there. And both of those um, commentaries really said two things. One, they said that the Hebrew in this passage is very hard to translate. So it's really hard to know what it's saying. But, but both of these comment, commentators said that the basic accepted view is that, is that the passage is saying, um, if you see in your society that the poor are mistreated and not cared for, by the officials who are responsible for taking care of them. That is because up and down our society and in our government, people are greedy. They will only look out for themselves and that this greed and corruption usually extends all the way to the top. So, you talk about two entirely different readings of a passage. My sort of, you know, 
initial reading versus what I was, was reading from commentators. And, and they seem to be saying exactly opposite things. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, what, what I have learned to do is to listen to the reading that most makes me cringe, that I'm most likely to disagree with. So in this instance, uh, the first reading is more of where my heart is. I really do believe that those of us who serve in professions that are charged with taking care of the poor do have to answer for God, answer to God if we are corrupt or cruel or mistreat them. Um, but if with that sort of optimistic position, I listen to the second interpretation, which basically says that greed and corruption are so powerful in our human hearts that it even leads people who care for the poor to mistreat them. That is sort of a realistic reminder of how great the problem is and how prone we are as human beings to mistreat others, particularly those who are disadvantaged or at the bottom. So what do you do with that? Well, you know, I know a lot of you all are tuning in to this early in the morning when the sun is out and the day is bright and everybody looks forward to a, a fresh start. And you can hear the birds singing on, on this summer day. And you probably don't wanna hear this dark message. But what this message says to me, if we combine these two, if we take the best of my first reading and my second reading is this, uh, our concern for the least, the last, and the lost always faces barriers. The power of sin and greed and selfishness and looking out for number one is pervasive in our society and in our hearts. But that should not stop us from our call to care and do our best for every human being on the face of the earth. The second passage only reminds us of the height of the mountain that we have to climb, <clears throat> but it does not deter us from the call and promise of God to keep climbing, to keep getting up, to keep serving, to keep caring. Because I do think that among those who watch, those responsible for caring are the eyes of God. And that, while I don't believe in a terribly judgmental God, I do believe that all of us have to answer to God for what we give up doing when it's not yet time to give up the fight. So whatever you're doing today, whatever you're called to do, get up, get out of bed, listen to the bird song. It's a new day. The sun is rising and go out and do it. It's the right thing. Let us pray. Dear God, even in the face of human sin and evil and complicity and greed and laziness and despair. Give us the power, the inspiration to serve your people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs>